Hello, hello, it's Monica from Crafting with Queen Lady, and I hope you have an absolutely fabulous day. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this Easter card using a free gift from Creative Stamping Magazine, issue 106. In the magazine, you can find lots of beautiful ideas and projects to try, but on page number 8, you can actually check my project I created, and if you're interested, the link is in the top right corner. The magazine comes with a four size stamp set called Sinning Springtime and it also has matching stencil, which you can use for a variety of projects. First, I've got a piece of copy paper and this one measures 12 by 17 centimeters and using my pencil, I'm going to create a template in the shape of an egg. And this way we can create an Easter card in the shape of an egg and the reason I chose 12 by 17 centimeters for my template because I want this card to fit in 5 by 7 inches envelope. Now I'm going to trace that template twice on 300 GSM white card using my pencil and I really recommend to keep your templates because later on in the future you can create more cut in this shape and I wonder do you actually create templates for your cut bases if you do what is the main shape you use please let me know in the comments down below now as you can see I'm using my scissors to fussy cut all those two eggs and I'm going to keep the scrap paper because later on we're going to use the smaller stamps from Sinning springtime stamp set and I'm going to stamp some of the images so please, please keep those pieces because later on you can use them. If you ever go um, over the line here, you can actually put those two eggs together and then you can actually fix it super quick and easy. Now I'm going to uh, show you how to add color. And to do it, I'm going to use Distress Oxide inks in Broken China and Twisted Citron. I really like ink blending technique because this way you can actually create so many beautiful backgrounds on your projects. And I wonder, do you do that or do you prefer to use colored paper? Please let me know in the comments down below. So here I'm actually using blue for sky and Twisted Citron for grass. And using evergreen bow, I'm going to use a stencil and add even more grass because as you can see, we've got some templates here. And this is the easiest and the quickest way to do it. I absolutely love how this actually stencil goes so well with the stamp set. And I wonder how often do you stencil pencils in your card making to use them for any specific occasion or like in this case Easter card so please let me know in the comments down below I really strongly suggest and encourage you to clean your stencil in between whenever you want to apply more color or ink and then you can actually turn it over and use different uh, color or actually can offset it, which is absolutely stunning about using any stencils. And even if you make a mistake here, it doesn't really matter because later on we're going to cover it. Now I'm using another 300 GSM scrap piece of card and I'm actually going to use my template and this time I'm going to leave a gap. So the egg I'm drawing at the moment is going to be slightly bigger. The reason behind this is because I'm going to use some stamps from the collection and in this case I'm going to use those beautiful Easter eggs and I'm going to stamp them and later on I'm going to do those chicks and also Easter bunnies. And as you can see, the stamps are actually put together so you can use your scissors and cut them apart. As long as you don't go over uh, the lines, you won't damage your stamps. And to stamp all my Easter eggs here, going on the pencil uh, line, which I created using a template, I'm using waterproof black ink by Spectrum Noir because later on I'm going to use zig markers to color in all my small images and that's why I need to have waterproof ink. I wonder what is your favorite waterproof ink for stamping small images? 
please let me know. As you can see, I've got a variety of zig markers on the right hand side and I'm spreading the color using wet paintbrush. This is super quick and so much fun to do. Here I've got lots of beautiful colors, but in the end I didn't use all of them. I just stayed with some greens, blues and purples. Sometimes I just can't resist and I wonder what is your favorite color palette for Easter cards and Easter projects. Please, please let me know. I really try to go very vivid and bright, but I really ended up with those greens, blues and purples. I sometimes just can't resist and these colors are always my go-to. I even look at the pinks here, but then I decided, no, it won't go well with those greens and blues. If you actually create any Easter card with Easter eggs, please let me know what colors do you use to decorate them. I'm really curious. And my very big tip, whenever you color small images like these, I really suggest that you use the darkest color at the very end for some small details. Now I've got my cutting mat and a craft knife and I'm going to actually cut the frame. As you can see, it doesn't really take long, but you have to be super careful not to cut your fingers. And cutting mat, it is perfect whenever you use a craft knife. So I do strongly suggest you use it. Now I'm going to erase the pencil mark and I'm going to use my scissors to cut the outside of the frame. Super quick and simple. And this way you've got a really unique Easter card and I really hope it will inspire you to create something similar this Easter. Now, as you can see, I've got that scrap piece of card I used earlier, and I'm going to stamp some chicks and bunnies. I ended up having six of them all together, and again, I'm going to use my zig markers to color them in, and wet paintbrush to spread the colors. And whenever you stamp some small images, sometimes the stamp is not very clear. So yes, you can stamp again and no one will ever know. I wonder, do you actually use zig markers in your paper crafting? Have you ever tried them? If you have, how many colors do you have in your collection? Please let me know, because when I was introduced to them, I didn't know there were packs. I just bought them separately, the colors I really wanted, and every single year I added two or three colors, and that's how I built my collection. And to be honest, I think I don't really need the whole set. I just like all the colors I've got, because what's really good about zig markers, whenever you mix them, they blend beautifully and you can create new colors. So I really suggest these are, I think, one of my favorite watercolor markers. And also I've got um, aqua markers by Spectrum Noir as well, but these got really nice fine tip, which is a big bonus. Now, before we start decorating, we have to create a flap on the back panel. And to do it, I'm using my scoreboard and scoring tool. I'm going to burnish that flap and using my one and only liquid glue, magic glue, I'm going to put the back and the front of a card together. Super quick and easy. And as usual, I open the card and I burnish that as well. Now we're going to put the frame. I've got small pieces of double-sided foam adhesive and I'm going to use a tiny drop of liquid glue and I'm going to put it on the card. And this way you've got really nice dimension on your card and I really, really suggest you use some double-sided foam adhesive. Now I'm going to use a um, basket of blossoms and this cutting die set came from Die Cutting Essentials and I think it was issue number 34 and I really wanted to use that Easter basket. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to add a little bit of color using Walnut Stain Distress Oxide ink. And now it is time to add a sentiment. And I'm going to use the sentiment from the stamp set and it actually comes in one piece. So again, I'm going to use my scissors to cut them apart and I'm going to use that happy and Easter words. And again, I'm going to use my 
waterproof black ink because it always gives me that nice crisp image. And even then, I'm not going to use any markers on top, it is still fine. To add a little bit of dimension, I'm going to use double-sided foam adhesive, and this way it will be on the same level as the X, and it will give my card a little bit more interest. And I wonder, do you do that in your card making? Do you actually put some double-sided foam adhesive on some of the elements just to match them and make sure that they are evenly spaced? Now I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue, magic glue, and I'm going to start assembling all the pieces together. And with the basket, as you saw, it was a little bit tricky because I just eyeballed it with the sentiment and I had to move the basket, but that was fine. And off camera, I actually created more Easter cards, uh, sorry, Easter eggs, uh, the same way I created the frame. And using my pokey tool, I just raise the inside of the basket and this way I was able to put some easter eggs inside and adding those chicks and bunnies I think it adds so much to the card I really really hope you really like this video and if you do I hope you will feel inspired to create something similar and now you can finish uh, you can see the finished card there is lots of space inside to write the message and the card is complete Please let me know what do you think about this? What do you think about all the techniques used in this project? Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting!